Introduction Six-year-old Jonathan's face lit up when he saw the all-you-can-eat buffet. I told him he could have all he wanted, and he smiled from ear to ear without taking his eyes off the food. I asked him, Johnny, would you like some boiled shrimp? He looked up with an inquisitive face and asked, What does it taste like? Just like chicken nuggets, I confidently replied. I watched my son grab the clear tongs and quickly fill his plate with shrimp from the ice-filled serving bowl. I was more than just a little amused when he preferred ketchup instead of cocktail sauce. I thought, it is a beautiful thing to watch a little boy eat. He had already finished about half of his plate when he looked up at me with ketchup all over his face, but without the smile I had anticipated. I asked him, Johnny, how do you like shrimp? He blurted out, I love it, but it's kind of crunchy. I gasped as I realized I had forgotten to tell him to peel the shrimp. Johnny, all the shrimp is yours, but just eat the part that's for you. God gave us the whole Bible. It is his love story. It is the great story of how God, because of his great love for us, redeemed humanity from death and destruction by his son, Jesus. It chronicles God's glorious creation falling into sin, mankind's attempt to live under the old covenant law, and God's glorious new covenant of grace. The scripture says God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he has made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 through 4. God never meant for man to try to live under the old covenant law. The law was given by God through Moses to expose sin and to reveal mankind's need for a savior. Trying to live under the old covenant law and God's new covenant of grace at the same time is like trying to enjoy eating shrimp without peeling the shells. You know it's supposed to be good, but it's difficult to enjoy. God wants us to be able to enjoy life, not just survive it. Enjoying the goodness of God is not a Christian self-help book, though it will help you. It's not a Bible study, though you will learn about the Bible. It's not designed to motivate you to try harder, though you will be motivated. It does not contain the steps to achieve personal actualization and success. Though when you discover who you are in Christ Jesus and all he has done for you, you have found great success. The purpose of this book is to point you back to Jesus and allow Jesus to reveal himself to you once again. The more you see Jesus, the more he will change you from glory to glory. Not behavior modification, but heart transformation. And that results in great success. In 2014, the self-improvement market in the U.S. alone was over $10 billion a year and growing rapidly. Many Christian self-improvement programs and books have even reached the secular world's bestsellers list. In spite of all this money and effort, little has changed. For every person that has reached a pinnacle of self-improvement success, there are literally tens of thousands of others who have given up, defeated by one more thing in life. Also, the winners of these self-improvement programs are often the ones who have left behind their families in their quest 
for self-actualization and fulfillment. Even in Christian circles, the stories of divorce and children left behind for ministry success are epidemic. The Bible is not a self-improvement program. It's not even a manual for life. If the Bible is a manual, it is the single most complicated and misunderstood manual of all time. The Bible is not even our source of life. The Bible is the unique gift from God that points us to the one who is eternal life. The Bible reveals Jesus and invites us to come to him for life. The scripture says, you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and these are they which testify of me. But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. John chapter 5, verse 39 through 40. Unwillingly, we preachers are the ones that have made things difficult. We search the scriptures to create a sermon in order to help the people. The three steps to this, the seven steps for that, our focus is on helping the people, not revealing Jesus. We tell Christians to read their Bible and believe it but we do not tell them which part of the Bible is for them. We tell them to eat the shrimp, but we don't tell them to peel the shrimp first and eat only the part that's for them. Not because our motivation is wrong, but because that's all we know. We tell Christians that Jesus has forgiven them of all of their sins. Then we tell them to search their heart to see if they can find any sin in their life. We tell Christians that Jesus has redeemed them from the curse of the law. Then we tell them that they will be cursed if they don't tithe. We tell them to trust Jesus for their provision. Then we tell them they will not reap unless they sow. We tell them they're saved by grace. Then we tell them they must work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. It's not surprising that the sheep are confused, scattered, and weary. We have fed them a mixture of law and grace. We have focused on the scriptures instead of revealing the one to whom the scriptures point. May this book point you to the loveliness of Jesus and allow Jesus to reveal himself to you once again. He will refresh and encourage your soul. He will transform your heart. He will cause you to enjoy life again.